So let's get into our big story this week. The many headlines surrounding the FDNY. The city's fire department seeing several switch ups in leadership roles from firings to demotions and step downs. Some members even bring a lawsuit against the department. And we're going to get all into that in just a moment. But first, I want to talk about safety. That remains the top concern for the FDNY and so many New Yorkers. Just this past week, a fire in the Bronx left five people injured, including two firefighters and a child. Residents in that building say there were no smoke alarms. And then just two weeks ago, lithium ion batteries to blame for a three alarm fire in Brooklyn. Those batteries blamed for more than 20 fires and two deaths just this year alone. And that prompted the city council to take action. Late last week, the council passing new safety standards requiring those batteries sold in the city to be certified. This is an issue the FDNY and the city council are working on together closely to keep you, the New Yorker, safe. And for more on that, I'm going on the record with FDNY Commissioner Laura Cavanaugh. And Commissioner Cavanaugh, good to see you. Thanks for being here on Picks on Politics. Thanks for having me. So, Commissioner, let's talk about this, this ongoing safety issue with these lithium-ion batteries, right? Legislation now on the table to regulate these batteries and find those sellers who are selling those. So how effective can that be? when you order them, you can order them easily on the web, right? And just get them so easily at your fingertips. You can, and, and you know, to your point, we have to come at this from so many angles to make sure that we're tackling the safety issue. So we do need the city council to regulate those to make sure that in the future, those devices are not being sold here in the city, but we're also working with the Consumer Product Safety Commission and they can actually stop these devices from coming in through the ports. They have actually seized thousands of devices mm -hmm. from these online retailers. So you really have to come at it from all angles to make sure um, that we're keeping these devices out of people's homes. And what I would say is, you know, we know that citizens have these in their homes right yeah. now. So we're also focused on reaching people who already have a device, even as we're trying to regulate future I guess, devices. Help us understand, Commissioner, why these specific batteries are so dangerous and are igniting fire so easily. Sure. So there's a few reasons. One, you know, they haven't been regulated yet. We have other devices in our lives, like our laptops or our phones, that have these same batteries but have been regulated. And that's why you don't see them uh, causing the same risk. The other factor is that there are many bikes that uh, often are damaged because of the way you use the, the bikes or even the batteries in the bikes themselves are being sort of homemade or made at home. Mm. Um, and that exposes them to tremendous risk. It means that the battery itself can be unstable. Uh, and that is often what causes it to burst into flames. And then as I think you've seen, as we put out some of these videos, because of the size of the batteries in mm. these bikes, you know, saying it caught fire almost almost underplays how dangerous it is. They really explode. Yeah. Uh, they create yeah. so much damage that it, it is very unlikely that someone could get out in the in the case that this caught on fire in their home. But like you said, so many people actually rely on some of these things that need these kinds of batteries to simply get around the city. So if they have one of those devices, your advice is to make sure you're buying something that is, in fact, regulated. How do you tell? Exactly. We're, we're trying to recognize that people are using these for their livelihood, that in many cases they've already purchased them. Um, so the way you can tell if something is certified is, is if it has the UL label on it. Okay. Um, but what I would also encourage people is any type of device they have, they should make sure that they're never charging that device when they're not monitoring it. Right. And they should make sure that device is in a place in their home that is not between them and the exit. Um, that's the, the most essential piece for making sure both okay. that they can out and that the first responders can reach them if there's Got a it. fire. Uh, Commissioner, I want to talk about another big issue right now. Our Mayor Murphy's been reporting on the rise of Trank, a new drug with this animal tranquilizer and how it's making its way to New York, right? So you do oversee the EMS. How are you preparing for this? And do you anticipate there to be an uptick in cases that's going to really affect folks on the street? So we are continually looking at uh, upcoming trends. I just met with our chief of EMS to discuss, you know, what we're seeing out there. And so we're always trying to stay ahead of these trends. But, you know, it is really scary, some of these new uh, new drugs, right, that are out there and how dangerous they are. But we're always looking at the trends. You know, our members respond regularly to overdoses um, and do have, you know, the training and experience yeah. to know what to do. Cases. Okay. And I do want to address, obviously, the lawsuit facing the department right now, because in that lawsuit, some recently demoted chiefs say the city is at risk because of gaps in leadership. Now, there's a bit of a backstory here, so I do want to brief our viewers on it. Starting about a month or so ago, several FDNY assistant chiefs were demoted. In response, two other chiefs stepped down in what looks like a move of solidarity. Now, those three demoted are suing the FDNY and you personally to get their jobs back. So let's begin with the demotions commissioner. Not unheard of that you want to actually build your own team as a new commissioner, right? So the question is why these specific chiefs, chiefs did they not have the experience you wanted? 
So as you mentioned, like any commissioner, I'm building my own team, uh, an executive team at headquarters. You know, I can't comment on any, any specific ongoing uh, litigation, but I would just say that, you know, our, we, any notion that we are not staffed or understaffed is completely false. Um, we have many, many members with many decades of experience serving right now, including our chief of department and chief of operations, who you've seen uh, responding to these fires, responding with me, um, and focusing with me on these, uh, you know, critical issues like e-bikes. You know, we are 100 percent focused on the safety of our members and the safety of the public, and we remain completely fully staffed uh, and responding to 911 calls 24-7. Yeah. I just want to zero in on what you just said there because I think it's really important because the lawsuit says the changes have left the city with a, quote, unimaginable level of unpreparedness, citing that there are not many top chiefs who can handle something like a five alarm or even a four alarm fire. So you're disagreeing with that, right? So do you have enough of those chiefs to answer those kinds of calls? Yes, that statement is false. We have uh, all of our chiefs are in place. All of our chiefs have those decades of experience. All of those chiefs have responded to those fires and are doing so right now. We have tremendous, tremendous experience in the FDNY. You know, it's one of our uh, greatest, uh, uh, you know, things as a department is how much experience we have yeah. here. Um, and we are fully staffed responding 24 seven. And I can assure you, me and those chiefs, uh, you know, speak regularly and our our only focus is the safety of the members and the public. Yeah. And that was I just wanted to make sure that that was known for those New Yorkers. You know, the lawsuit comes after you repeatedly highlighted that you have never been a firefighter with a lawsuit and those top top chiefs stepping aside. So I guess, you know, the question is, do you feel that you can properly lead the department and that you have the confidence of the department with this lawsuit now kind of looming overhead? Absolutely. You know, uh, in the last uh, 10 commissioners, uh, less than half of them have been fire chiefs. So um, there have been civilian commissioners before. Um, you know, I operate as a chief executive, which is my experience um, running the agency, and I rely on my chiefs day in, day out to uh, inform me on what's happening in operations, to advise me, um, and to um, you know make sure that operations are running in the field. Yeah. Um, so I'm you know, no different than any executive before me, no different than any uh, commissioner before me. Um, number one focus uh, every day is our our members, um, and you know the who I think about every morning, every yeah. evening. Um, I go out in the field, and that's what the chiefs and I talk about every day: is how do we make sure that they're okay? Yeah, and you know, you were appointed by by Mayor Eric Adams. Have you spoken to the mayor in, in, in the past week since that lawsuit was filed? Was he aware of these plans of changes, and, and did, did he have your support? Yeah, I'm not going to speak to that. You know, our private conversations, but I just say that him and I um, speak regularly. Uh, you know what? I guess you know when we talk about those new chiefs that you're building your own team, right? And it is important you have your own team that you feel you can rely on. What are you looking for from from new chiefs? You know, I look for anyone. Uh, EQ uh, is an exceptionally important to me. Um, you know, the ability to in government take something that we care about and actually move it forward uh, is something that I look for in all leaders. Um, you know, government is big, as you know, and bureaucracy is uh, famous for not moving quickly. Um, but in my career, I have always been able to uh, take the great brand that is the FDNY and use that to get resources for our members, resources for the public, yeah. and to move projects forward. And that's what I look for in all my leaders is that they, um, you know, have high emotional intelligence, that they have the respect of the people that work under them, um, that they have the experience in whatever realm they work in, and that we're all focused on trying yeah. to take ideas to fruition and make sure that our members actually uh, have what they need in the field. Commissioner, we've had a number of conversations since you became uh, commissioner, and one of your big priorities was diversity and bringing a diverse workforce to the department, including many more women. How is that going now that you're about a year into to the position? Uh, how are you doing in terms of getting those numbers where you want them to be? Yeah, we've made a number of historic uh, firsts, which is, you know, my goal. I don't want to be the only first, as I've said to you before, and I don't want to be the last. So we've made a number of historic appointments. Um, I will be looking to make more and we'll be implementing a num number of programs, including developing leadership pipelines so we can make sure that we are um, not only getting those uh, diverse numbers in the door, but that we're seeing that diversity rise through the ranks and that when we're at the table making decisions that we have in a diver diversity of opinions and background.